Oh hi, I didn't see you there. I was very busy reading this book. I don't need to tell you what a huge cultural impact Star Wars had in 1977. Every film producer and their mother, Mrs. Film Producer, were pooping their drawers to try to rip off the film en masse. Leave it to the Italians to do it the weirdest and crappiest. Ladies, gentlemen, lentlemen, I give you Star Crash. Released in 1979, Star Crash was a colorful, nonsensical fever dream masquerading as a space adventure, complete with hokey effects, poor dubbing, silly costumes, and David Hasselhoff. No, we can't allow this. Yes. Though ostensibly made by adults, this film has the look and feel of something written and produced by a 12 year old. Model and former Bond girl Caroline Monroe plays Stella Starr, a wanted smuggler who is apparently the best star pilot in the galaxy, though you wouldn't know it by how much time she spends not being a pilot. It has to be said, she's not very bright. It's a spaceship. Early in the film, Stella is arrested and sent to a penal colony. Judging by her outfit, the producers were thinking with their penal colonies. Seriously, I know she's hot, but are we really going to believe she's doing hard labor hours. wearing thigh highs and eight strips of vinyl? P.S. The whole prison thing slaves. lasts about three minutes. You'd better work if you don't want a taste of the burning of their energy whips too. Former child evangelical preacher Marjo Gortner plays Acton, Stella's navigator. He doesn't have much of what we like to call a character beyond being blessed with several incongruous powers, such as the power to not die from being shot, the power to bring people back from the dead, and of course the most important power, this. Good job, Acton. They're eventually teamed with robot cowboy L and bald green guy Thor to track down the missing son of the Emperor. I come to you because my faithful robot L has told me that you are the only one who could save us. Whoa! Why is Christopher Plummer in this movie? Can anyone tell me that? Anyone at all? Anyone? You? You're a wall? Okay. You? Mattress? Sounds good. I'd love to know. Am I talking to myself? Is that why no one ever plays cards with me? Okay. I'm so alone. The crew decides to travel in hyperspace because it's much faster. The distance we must travel is enormous. By using hyperspace, what would normally take two months to reach, we should do in two hours. And head to investigate several ready? planets. Ready. Eventually, right. running afoul of some Amazons. Don't make us kill you! Uh, come on! Forget everything I said, this is the greatest film ever made. They're forced to run away from a giant mechanical nude woman. Notice also the picture of the planet on the left is clearly Earth. Look! Whoa! Run for your life! Finally, after much more ridiculous ballyhoo, they find the Emperor's son, Simon. Hasselhoff! This is not a drill, people. We have a confirmed this Hasselhoff in Sector 12. Stella and Simon are set upon by some cavemen and are all but lost until... Acton shows up with his trusty copyright infringement. They make their way through a bad composite shot until they find the lair of the villain, Count Zarth Arn, played by Joe Spinell, he of the terrifying face. In less than an hour's time, all that will be left of this planet will be ashes and cosmic dust forever. Zarthorn sets his stop-motion robots on an old film strip of our heroes, where Acton dies for no good reason. Bye, I guess. Now we come to one of the stupidest and therefore most memorable parts of the film. The ending. By sunset, I'll be the new emperor, and I will be the master of the whole universe! and the Peace of Resistance. The gold ships fire gold torpedoes which crash through the windows on the Count's bridge. Then, out of the torpedoes pop soldiers who fire on the Count's many guards. Okay, so not only do the filmmakers think that the windows separating inside from outer space are made of glass, and that breaking them causes no atmospheric change at all, but that the best thing to have in the belly of a torpedo are guys with guns and not, I don't know, explosives that would blow up the ship, or at the very least kill Zartharn, the guy you're trying to kill. Am I the only one seeing this? Two guys with guns? 
None of this matters, of course, because two minutes later, Stella and Elle fly a plastic Christmas ornament into the glove of Zartharn. A floating ship is about to crash into us! What? There it is! Dead ahead! Alright! Which blows up 50 times, from a hundred different angles, and everybody's okay. Star Crash is what I assume Carrie Fisher sees every moment of every day. It's stupid, poorly made, and incredibly fun to watch. Take a sleeve of children's Tylenol and enjoy. I've been Kyle Anderson, and for more awesomely bad movies, check out Modern Primate's YouTube channel and go to modernprimate.com. Thanks!